So there might be something on the way that's going to change the entire electronic shifting industry. So let's talk about it. So guys, electronic shifting is nothing new. It's been around for a couple years. Every single brand has their own version of it and it's making its way down to budget lines pretty quickly. There are a lot of advantages when it comes to electronic shifting. One, it's a lot easier to set up. There are no cables to run. So if all you have to do is mount the sending unit shifter and the derailleur itself. It makes for a lot cleaner install. You don't have to wire any cables through all these carbon frames that we have these days. And it is one less cable that's up on the handlebars to slap around and make noise. So overall, the install is a lot cleaner and it looks a lot cleaner on the bike. And number two, they're really accurate. Once set up correctly, they even can hit a log in most cases and self-center back and give you clean shifting out on the trail without any adjustments. So that's a nice thing to have, especially if you ride in areas like we do in the deep forest where it's gonna get hit at some point in time. But as many as the good things that go along with electronic shifting, there are some bad, and the first is cost. They are pretty expensive. Even the lower end units that are getting these now are more expensive than their mechanical counterparts. So number two, and this is the big one for me, is being reliant on another battery. You have to make sure these things are charged when you go out for a ride. If it goes dead out on the trail, you're basically riding a single speed. If you're an endurance rider who does really long rides or a bike packer who does it over numerous days, it really isn't a viable option for you. Yes, you can bring extra batteries and they are small, but it's just one more thing that you have to worry about on the trail. So what might be the answer for these batteries and not having to use them? And back in November of 2022, SRAM actually filed a patent that's pretty interesting. They filed a patent for a regenerative motor inside the derailleur itself that would negate the need for a battery. So they wanna go about this three different ways. And the first one is really what I see the most viable moving forward. And that's using the upper pulley as a regenerative motor. Much like we see in the automotive industry and other industries that use regeneration to charge up units. So basically what this would do is take your pedal input and that movement of the upper pulley to to regenerate the power in the derailleur itself. Now, obviously you're probably going to get some sort of drivetrain loss with this, but I have to imagine it's gonna be pretty minimal because you're not requiring a lot of charge to keep that derailleur going. Now it's not all good news. And the reason for that is there's a lot of times where patents are just filed to either get ahead of the curve in front of someone else or just to throw an idea out there. So this could never make it to market. It could just be an idea and they could get into this and realize it's not really feasible to make from either a technological standpoint or price. And that brings me to the second part is that if this actually does come to market, electronic shifting is already expensive. It's going to be even more expensive, at least in the first few years. So what you're going to find is an increased cost over the battery powered ones to get the regenerative, which is really gonna put this out of the price point of most people. And then the third thing is, I don't know if I would wanna be an early adopter on a system like this. I have a feeling it's going to change a lot over the first couple of years, and you might wanna be the guy that's either generation two or generation three. So guys, I wanna hear what you think about this electronic shifting technology. Do you think it's actually going to make it to the market? Are you using electronic shifting now and do you enjoy it? Hit up the comment section below. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Bike198 for more videos like this in the future. And until then, on the next one. Thanks guys, see ya.